church believers, if we can really get that down in our spirit and in our minds and understand that um, we're not serving a God who will sleep. Even though sometimes we see things going on in the world that we may not like and we may not understand, he truly is in control of all things. And that's something that we have to learn to do, and that is to trust him with all things and allow him to reign in every area of our lives. And I just wanted to, you know, encourage us with that um, on tonight, that it's not just words to a song, but, you know, we have to learn how to make those things personal and apply it in our personal lives and allow the Lord to be ruler and to be king. That's what it means to reign over everything and not just what we consider the problems in our life, but even the things that we consider the good things, the things that it might seem like we have control over, allow him to be in control over those things. Allow him to um, be Lord in our life, in our entire life. Because after all, he paid the price for us. You know, we belong to him in every fiber of our being, every area of our life belong to him. And there's not one thing that we should do or attempt to do without consulting him and asking him what he thinks about it and asking him if it's his perfect will for us. You know, allow him to reign in, in our entire life. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all going to be seated. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to share this with you all just briefly before we uh, get started with tonight's lesson. Uh, earlier today, uh, I saw a plane crash. I heard a loud noise outside. And uh, I ran outside, and I, I was aware that this wasn't my house, but I was in it. And I ran outside, and uh, when I walked, got out the back door, there was a carport, like, you know, like just a regular carport with a overhead. And uh, I looked, and it looked like maybe four or five miles away, there was this plane that was descending, but it wasn't descending like normal, you know, you, I could tell that it was about to crash, and it crashed into the, uh, it disappeared behind the trees, it looked like, and then it just crashed. And then uh, I came out of that and saw again, heard a noise outside, and ran out the front door. This time, I knew I was in a different house again, and this time the plane was coming towards the house, and it was like, uh, like I said, it wasn't a nosedive, but it was, you could tell that it was going to crash because it wasn't a regular descent either, descent, and uh, this plane crashed as well. In the first part, I was showing my wife this, this plane, you know, and how it, when it crashed, it was just a big old fire, fire, you know, from the crash, and then the second time, it looked like it was close enough to hit the house that I was in. Now I'm not I'm I don't know uh whether or not uh it was the same plane and the Lord was just showing me it from a different angle and just giving me a close up to show me that it was going to land in a residential neighborhood or whether or not it was two different planes. But um that's what I saw and so uh we're gonna pray because I believe when the Lord shows us things like that, uh it's for us to pray as well. Uh, I've told you all the story before of when I was getting out of the military and I got on a plane to fly home. I was in San Diego and got on a plane to fly to Houston. And um, while I was sitting there, it came to me all of a sudden that this plane, if if it took off, we weren't going to make it. That it was going to it was going to drop out of the sky. And so I prayed and I said, Lord, I just started preaching, you know, just a few months ago. And I said, Now nah, you didn't save my life and spare my life all of this time to just have me to die in a plane crash so you know uh get us off of here some kind of way now this plane was already in line waiting to take off you see like how they you know how they pull and they're waiting in line they'll have like two or three planes ahead of them and they're just waiting in line and so uh we we pulled up and we we made a left off of the runway and i looked out the window and here come the technicians coming up and they went into the cockpit and before I know it, they're unloading us, you know, maybe 30 minutes later, unloading us and putting us on another plane. And so uh, I, I didn't take that as, well, I guess this is my time. And I just, you know, uh, thank you, Lord, for warning me about this plane and letting me know how I'm going to leave here. You see, for the Lord to put that in my heart, it, 
I believe it was for me to pray that, you know, that they would find what was wrong with the plan. So we're going to pray uh, about this and, and pray that uh, the Lord uh, stop this from happening. And I believe that's one reason why. Now, let me explain to you. Sometimes the Lord shows you something. It's not for him to stop it, but it's still meant for us to stand in the gap. It could be that everybody on that plane is not in a place where they could pray or maybe not in a place where they can even hear from the Lord. And so a lot of times when God shows us something, it's for us to stand in the gap for those people, you see, for people, because sometimes we, uh, you know, that's what we're here for as Christians, is to stand in the gap for people. Somebody stood in the gap for us when we were out of fellowship with God. And so we're going to pray and ask the Lord to be merciful and to not allow this to happen, you see, not allow this to happen. Amen. So let's bow our heads and pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we come to you again tonight, thanking you for this fellowship, thanking you for this time that we have together to uh, learn more from you, Lord. And we are coming before you, Lord, in regards to what you've shown me today. Lord, I pray that you will spare the lives of these people. Lord, that you will step in in your wisdom and might, Lord, and that you will prevent this, this plane crash from happening, Lord. And that even though we know sometimes things happen, we know ultimately that you're in control and that life is in your hand, Lord. And we pray that you will spare the lives of these people, Lord. And also, Lord, we, we, we pray, Lord, that um, whatever it is that may go wrong, God, whatever it is that may be wrong in the plane or the cockpit or pilot error, whatever the case may be, Lord, we pray that you will step in, Lord, in your infinite wisdom. And, and, and not allow this thing to take place, Lord. And we don't know um, what spiritual state these people are in who will be on the plane, but we know, Lord, that you're merciful, God, and that you, that you don't give warnings for nothing, Lord. And we are abiding by your word. In the book of Ezekiel and in Jeremiah, Lord, you told your people to stand in the gap for people, Lord. And here we are tonight standing in the gap and making up the hedge, Lord, for people who may not know you. And, Lord, we thank you so much for being merciful to us in the times when we didn't know you. And we pray, Lord, that you will extend that same mercy to others who may not know you, who, who may even ignore your voice or don't know your voice when you're trying to speak to them. And so, Lord, we stand in the gap. We make up the hedge for people, Lord, not only for this of what I saw today, but for other things as well. We know that the enemy has plenty of tricks and tactics out there and plenty of spirits that are out there causing uh, wrecks and causing things to take place and bringing destruction on planet earth and so lord we pray right now lord that you will help us lord to be more spiritual minded lord help us to pay attention to the signs and the warnings that you give us help us lord to avoid the traps and the pitfalls that the enemy have set for us lord and we thank you so much for your warnings we thank you for your mercy in the name of jesus christ we pray amen Amen. All right. And so uh, we, we just, uh, just keep that situation in your prayers. <laughs>